fantastic. As you know, in the publishing industry is moving to PDF workflows. PDF is the standard on the web for high quality graphics. And it is now built in as the primary 2D layer in the Macintosh operating system in Mac OS X. We've added transparency and some other great effects, which you'll see in a minute. We've built in OpenGL for 3D graphics, and of course, QuickTime for media. All built into Mac OS X at a fundamental level. On top of this, we've layered three APIs. Classic lets you run existing Mac apps without modification. However, you do not get advantage, you do not get all the new features. You do not get the new user interface. You do not get protected memory. If one classic app crashes, all the classic apps that you may be running at that time will probably crash. But you can run your existing apps without modification. Now, the next API is Carbon. Carbon is something that takes developers a few months to tune up their classic apps, to take advantage of all the new features, and every developer we have, pretty much, is carbonizing their apps right now. And a carbonized app does get all the new features of Mac OS X. They just pop to life. And lastly, Coco. Coco is the most advanced, object-oriented API out there. It's a wonderful way to write new applications. You can write them up to 10 times faster than you can with any other technology that is now out there in the mainstream. So these are our APIs, and across all of them, we have a new user interface called Aqua. So this is the architecture. Now there's some new things in the public beta that you may not have seen before unless you're a developer. The first one is OpenGL. The second one is a full implementation of Java 2. We've been working very closely with Sun, and not only is our Java 2 implementation really fast, but we've tied it in to all of the Aqua user interface elements, so it's beautiful. Looks very, very much more beautiful than any Java implementation I think you may have seen. We support symmetric multiprocessing, so you can take advantage of your dual processor G4s in the most perfect way. And here's an interesting one. In PowerBooks, you know, at this point in time, we were not expecting to support portables that well. And yet, even in the beta, the power management is spectacular. And here's another thing. On portables today, when you wake them up, when you wake up a power book, it takes anywhere from 8 to 22 seconds, depending on the state of the networking. If the networking is turned off, it's 8 seconds. If it's turned on and not connected to anything, it can be up to 22 seconds to wake up. For any of these conditions in Mac OS X, your PowerBook will wake up from sleep in about one second. It's, it's actually really startling. In the time it takes you to open the lid, it's pretty much woken up. It's, it's neat. Also, the new Finder, you can hide the toolbar if you want to. You can also make a mess of the icons any way you'd like. <laughs> and in the dock, some people were having trouble keeping track of what was an application and what was a document. So we've separated them. We put a line in the middle, and applications are on the left side, documents are on the right side. You cannot put one in the wrong place. So very simple to keep track of things now. And the dock is just fantastic. In response to some of our professional customers who have said they love the Aqua interface, but they'd like to get rid of the color sometimes for dealing with very important color calibration in documents, we've put in a professional mode which basically turns all the color in every app to graphite. Very simple. <clears throat> we have a new QuickTime player that's fantastic. It's got the tone controls up here, as you can see. And it does not have the drawer anymore for the QuickTime channels. You push the button right on the player, and the channels just pop up right in the window, so you don't have that drawer popping out. We've also added an MP3 player and a little audio player that plays CDs. In Mac OS X in the beta, we also have a fantastic version of Internet Explorer that's been carbonized, running on 10. 
And that joins a few dozen applications, like a whole new mail application and all new system administration applications, which are shipping with Mac OS X. So what I'd love to do now is give you a demo. This is one of the screensavers. It goes and finds all your icons and makes a screensaver. OK. So Mac OS X. Now, for those of you that have not seen Mac OS X before, <clears throat> it's a little different uh, in that when you move windows around, the whole window moves around with its contents, not just an outline. And when you resize a window, it actually does it in real time. You can see the scroll bars moving, et cetera. Right? Very, very simple. And it's just unlike anything you've ever experienced on a Mac before. Very nice. Let me give you another cool thing about Windows 2. <clears throat> um, when you have a multitasking system and you get panels, you get alerts or dialogues, right now in the Mac, oftentimes it freezes the Mac. You cannot do something else until you dismiss those dialogues, as an example. But even if you could, you would get confused as to which window that dialog was associated with. So we've solved this problem in a wonderful way. Let's say that I want to save this document. I'll do a save as. That's the panel. It's attached to the window. It just comes right down here. And this is the save panel. <clears throat> now, you might say, well, what if the window's really small? Well, that's what happens. <clears throat> you might say, you know, what if the window's over near the edge of the screen? Well, that happens. So the level of fit and finish in Mac OS X is very, very high. Now, I want to show you something having to do with the save panel that illustrates